Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with how well AMD's Ryzen has managed to do on the desktop space, specifically analysing sales numbers from Mercury Research and some other bits and pieces as well, and trying to figure out how well AMD will continue to do in the next year. Then we'll move over to some news on the collaboration between AMD and Intel, specifically the i7-8709G, which of course features the Intel processors combined with a Vega GPU. We have some specifications for that. And then finally, we have news concerning Micron and the GDDR6 internal qualification, because they are eyeing the first half of 2018 for entering mass production. And this, of course, is going to be very interesting when it comes to how this is going to impact graphics cards next year. But we'll start things out, as I said, with the Ryzen processors. I also want to make one quick note. I'm putting out a couple of tech videos today, news stories, whatever you want to call them, simply because some people have said that because the a number of topics I cover in some videos is so ginormous, some things they were interested in they didn't even realize were including in the video. So on more kind of uh, busy news days, I've decided to kind of split them into a couple of videos. You let me know if you prefer that or want to keep them in one video. I'm sure I'm going to get split opinions, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, so when it comes to processors, specifically on the desktop, it's fair to say that AMD did not have exactly a stellar uh, 2015 or before. But, of course, as we started to see the introduction of the Ryzen lineup, things started to change. The company formally announced the Zen microarchitecture back in August of 2016, despite the fact that, of course, we saw rumours prior to that. Then the uh, 1800X from the Ryzen 7 series landed in the latter weeks of Q1, uh, specifically March 2017. And some people have tried to make some guesstimates on what the performance of AMD processors have been in the market. They've done this numerous ways. They've looked at Amazon sales data. They've looked at Steam database. And, of course, we see other things like pass mark results and all of the other bits and pieces. The problem is a lot of this is biased. And I don't mean that in a negative way, like people are trying to skew the numbers, but... Passmark, for example, doesn't necessarily indicate performance because, after all, a test submission doesn't indicate the market share. You could have just a whole bunch of Intel users who are doing this, or you could have a whole bunch of AMD users who are doing this, and it doesn't equate one-to-one -one ratio. The other issue when it comes to AMD's own um, financial results is it lumps the CPU and GPU revenues together in one metric. So, Good luck figuring that one out. Steam is even more crazy because not only do you get wild swings up and down all the time, whether there's a sale, perhaps it's going on, or perhaps there's a new game that's come out, or plum, what if a user buys a Ryzen 7 for sake of argument, but doesn't game? Like, you might have a user that uses an Intel processor for gaming and perhaps a Ryzen 7 for video production, and I suspect that has been the case for quite a lot of people. So we have some information from Tom's Hardware, who managed to obtain it from Mercury Research. And their numbers are actually rather interesting. From what we can ascertain, it appears that the company, that is AMD, to be clear, have sold almost 1 million processors over the preceding four quarters. Now you might say, well, 1 million, that's not much. I mean... The Switch has sold 10 million units, and that's not exactly amazing. However, there are some caveats. The first caveat is it does not um, tell us about what happened in the fourth quarter. Bear in mind, people, of course, are buying for the Christmas period. They're buying for their loved ones. And naturally, it also indicates people who uh, have purchased through Black Friday or Cyber Monday. In other words, for themselves. And because AMD slashed the prices drastically during this point, in fact... Um, our Coffee Lake was almost a no-show. In fact, the 8700K, the 8600K, they were very hard to get. And there are some um, theories behind that. One of them is that Intel cut the price of KB Lake quite a bit and were essentially trying to get rid 
I guess, of the a EOL, uh, that is KB Lake. After all, being realistic, most people don't want to buy a 7700K at, you know, RRP anymore, MSRP, whatever you want to say. And according to AFD's Lisa Sue, the company did triple its sales during this period. While Tom's Hardware does have an exhaustive list of the performance of AMD over various quarters, I'm going to give you the TLDR here because I don't want to make this video like a 20 minutes and just the sales because we've still got more stuff to cover on this topic than alone the other topics. But it would appear that according to another analyst, Christopher Rowland, he believes that AMD during the fourth quarter of this year, 2017, have reached about 13% market share, 12.9 to be exact, which is about a 0.4% margin of error with what Mercury Research have predicted in the fourth, the third quarter, excuse me, of 2017. And here's what's really impressive, at least in my opinion, you may find it not so impressive, but Ryzen's Threadripper models have actually made up, comprised of, 3% of the company's processor sales. To me, that's really damn impressive. And obviously, for people who wanted to jump in to the high-end desktop market, well, by golly gosh, it's very hard to argue with the value proposition of the 1950X, particularly during the Black Friday period, uh, Cyber Monday. I believe it was like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was like up to 200 US dollars off which frankly made the processor insanely cheap. I mean, I think at one point some retailers in the UK were doing some of the Threadripper once again for about 150 to 200 pounds off, which compare that to let's say the X299, which I still think is a good platform, but you know, 16 cores, 32 threads at that price. Yes, please, sir. And well, about the year ahead. Well, that's where it becomes a bit trickier. Obviously we do know that we will be seeing a shrink in the architecture, that is the process, which we've discovered at length before. Now, there is one thing that I actually forgot about in my previous analysis, I'll admit, I'm only human, I kind of screw up, and Tom's hardware actually reminds me about this, but Threadripper actually features a lower latency cache on terms of the level two and level three than Threadripper itself. Now, there are obviously some benefits behind this, specifically on the fact that we see so many processors, um, basically with so many cores and needing to share data between one another, well, lower latency was obviously very important because the basic Zeppelin die are used in um, Threadripper and of course Ryzen models there is obviously a great deal of hope that we will be seeing those changes in the 12NM uh, LP models as well. Hopefully we'll know more about that at CES, which obviously is now only a couple of weeks away. So it's going to be interesting. Um, once again, the assumption is we'll be seeing about 10% uh, increase in clock speed, perhaps a few other small tweaks, perhaps also the lower latency level 2 cache as well and level 3 cache. In theory, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm just pulling this number out of my butt, but we might see about 10 to 20% improvement in performance, depending on the application, depending on how uh, it favors single thread performance or how uh, much emphasis puts on like uh, level three cache and all of this other stuff. But hey, that would be pretty amazing, right? I mean, 20%, let's, let's go with a nice average of 15%, 15% improvement in performance. I would take that with a big smile on my face. And what about um, the other big piece of news from AMD, and that is the Vega M graphics, uh, which is going to be featured in the 8709G. This uh, comes to us from another YouTuber. I'll link the video. It's quite a short one, so I'm not going to uh, be very disrespectful, so I'm just going to uh, put in you know the very basics and tell you the specifications once again i'll link to him in the description of the video uh it looks like we have a four core eight thread cpu uh, that is based upon the kb lake processor which is fine it's clocked at 3.1 gigahertz turbos up to 3.9 uh, 3.9 i have no idea why i said, uh, pronounced it like that and it features the 694c colon C0 graphics core and that comes with four gigabytes of HBM2 memory and that naturally is with a 1024 bit memory bus. That is of course with the assumption that these results are accurate. 
The only thing that we don't have here is the actual configuration of the GPU itself. So obviously we'll just have to wait on that and for more benchmark results. Finally, Micron have returned. No, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, finally, Micron are finalizing or have finalized the GDDR6 internal qualification. And they are once again uh, aiming for the first half of 2018 for mass production. So once again, 2017 is just a couple of weeks until it goes bye-bye. And so now um, the company are basically looking forward to getting rid of GDDR5X and moving over to GDDR6, which puts out better performance for lower power consumption. And perhaps most interesting of all, can increase the density of the memory modules with the JDEC specification that telling us it could handle up to 32 uh, gigabit. Uh, this is double which um, the GDDR5X could handle. So primarily the company now are working on actually increasing the speeds of the memory. Uh, they want to get it up to 16 Gbps uh, on GDDR6. And this is going to be absolutely amazing because obviously if you have faster memory, it means you could have a uh, narrower memory bus, which particularly for mid-range graphics cards, that's really good. Uh, obviously this is a uh, gross simplification but if you have a 128 bit memory bus and the memory modules have doubled in density and you have doubled the clock speed so for example 16 gbps then that's essentially what you could achieve with a 256 bit memory bus with memory modules that are 8 gigabits per second and obviously half the density so that could be really interesting for the next generation of graphics chips which will no doubt be venturing forth from the uh, darkness that is AMD's laboratories and Nvidia's laboratories, and obviously with a lot of uh, a lot of expectations on how this is going to happen. GDDR5 has been around for some time now, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this is going to happen. So I do expect, however, being realistic, GDDR6 for the first like year is probably probably not going to be something in like a $200 graphics card because it obviously is not going to have the best, um, you know, basically the memory is going to be very hard to produce. So it's probably going to be quite a few dub wafers and it's not going to be something that is going to be cheap. So most likely, in theory at least, GDDR5 is probably going to remain the norm for uh, mid-range graphics cards at least for the first year but after that who the hell knows memory prices as we all know have fluctuated just absolutely like crazy over the past 12 to 18 months and i did do a story on this yesterday but too long didn't read dram has absolutely exploded in market over the past like you know year or so and we're looking up to like 70 percent ish um improvement well i say improvement in a very loose term but basically it's the margins on memory, the revenue, that's the word I was looking for, has increased by 70%. And therefore, um, a lot of companies now, including Micron and blah, 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 have obviously thrown in a lot of money into the production of new refineries. So it's going to be really interesting to see, sorry, not refineries, uh, manufacturing plants. You can tell that uh, I need food. Can't you? My concentration has gone to absolute hell over the past couple of minutes. Anyway, essentially, it's going to be really good news for those who are looking for uh, the successor to the current graphics cards, whatever they end up being called, whether we're going to see Volta for the desktop or not. We know that AMD are looking at migrating to a GDDR6 memory controller. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe. Uh, have a good holidays, Christmas, whatever you want to call it, depending on the region of the world and so on that you live. But I shall see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.